Here's another grab bag overview of some changes to GD Script 2 that you may want to know about. And in case you missed it, you can find the link to part 1 down below. First up, signal updates. Signals are still declared the same way as before, but with the addition of callables to Godot 4, how you connect to them via code is now different. Previously, you'd use a syntax like this, using strings to declare both the signal and the connected function. But now, you can reference the signal directly from an object, call connect on it, and simply pass it the callable you want to connect. But if you need to make dynamic connections at runtime, you can still use strings to dynamically make connections. The other thing you may be curious about is how to pass additional parameters to your signal connections beyond what the signal itself will emit. Say we want multiple buttons to connect to the same signal, but should also pass along which button was pressed. In Godot 3, we just add all extra parameters to an array at the end of the call to connect. In Godot 4, we instead bind our parameters to the desired callable, which gives us the same result as before in that any bound parameters will be added after parameters supplied by the emitting signal. And if you prefer to pass an array of values for whatever reason, you can alternatively use bind v. This next one is a really small but convenient change. The ysort node is gone from Godot 4 and has instead been rolled into the canvas item class, which both control and node2d inherit from, meaning you can now take any 2d object and enable ysorting for its children without having to change its type to a ysort node or add such a node somewhere in your hierarchy. Just toggle Ysort under Canvas Item Ordering in the editor, or change the Ysort enabled property via code. And now let's talk everyone's favorite subject, documentation. A syntax for documentation comments has been added to GDScript 2, letting you automatically generate and view documentation for your application from within the editor. To write them, you just use a double hash instead of a single hash, like you would a comment. But there's also some extra formatting help built in. Want to write a high-level summary of a script? Throw a documentation comment at the very top of your script in this syntax to have a brief description, long description, and a link to one or more tutorials. You can also use documentation comments for script members by putting them immediately before their declaration. In addition to showing up in the documentation page, exported variables will also show you their docs in the editor. And for extra fun, you're not stuck with just plain text as BB code is supported. Tweens have received a rewrite in Godot 4, and Godot 3 users are in luck as this feature has been backported via the scene tree tween class. Rather than the previous requirement of using a tween node, tweens are now simple ref counted instances handled by the scene tree, making them more lightweight and available anywhere in the application. Just create a tween by calling create tween from either the scene tree or from a node if you want to bind the tween to that node, and then tween your properties. The new tween system also supports sequential tweens by default, making it easier to build up a more complex sequence of animations. Just create your tweens one after the other, and each one will wait for the one before it to finish before beginning. You can also run tweens in parallel if you want though, by chaining the parallel command with your tween. And while I've just shown basic property tweening here, it's also possible to invoke custom methods, put delays between tweens, change the easing settings, and so on. But since this is just a high-level preview, I'll link you to the docs below to learn more. Custom performance metrics can now be easily added to your game via the performance singleton by calling performance.addCustomMonitor and giving your custom metric a name and a callable that will return a number greater than or equal to zero. You can also put a slash in the name to group metrics together under more useful categories than just custom, which is what you get by default. Use this to track performance, debugging, and other metrics of interest to you. And that's a few more changes to GDScript 2 to be aware of, but there's a lot more that's changed, especially if you're looking to port an existing Godot 3 project to 4. The list of renamed features alone is pretty long, so I'll link to a handy page in the docs for more info about migrating projects.